Hello investors and welcome to my YouTube channel where I study the best investors and businesses from around the world. In this week's video we'll be discussing Coos Becker and his investment in Tencent. If the name Coos Becker doesn't ring a bell, you might be familiar with Naspers or the Mnet brand, which was founded by Becker's leadership. In fact, Manish Parai also said that he got most of his Tencent information from Coos Becker and Naspers. In this video, we're going to delve deep into who Coos Becker is and what his thoughts are on investing in great companies through Naspers. For those who might not know, Naspers is a global internet group and one of the largest technology investors in the world, where Coos Becker was CEO from 1997 through 2014. The company operates in 130 countries and is listed on the London and Johannesburg stock exchanges. The group conducts business in Europe, Africa, Latin America, China, India, Russia, and some other countries. Its principal operations are internet communication, entertainment, gaming, and e-commerce. Through Naspers, Coos Becker made several investments. For instance, he led Naspers to invest in Chinese internet and media firm Tencent in 2001, Today, Naspers has a 31% stake in Tencent and is the largest shareholder. This investment boosted Naspers' stock price over time and became one of the most successful venture capital investments. Early life and career. As a son of a cattle farmer, Jacobus Petrus Becker was born in 1952, four years after the National Party won control of South Africa's government. He grew up on a farm and went to local school and and after graduating, went to Stellenbosch University to get his undergraduate degree in law and honors in literature. He did a postgraduate LLB or law degree in Wits University. Coos Becker then moved to New York in the 1980s to go and work in the advertising industry. In 1983, he enrolled in Columbia Business School to complete his MBA. And during this time, he noticed a phenomenon in pay TV icon. Since HBO's creation in 1972, Becker had become fascinated with HBO and pay TV. In 1984, he completed his MBA with a thesis about the HBO of South Africa. From, from there, the concept of Mnet was born. In October 1986, Mnet launched with just 12 hours of programming and was an immediate sensation amongst the Afrikaans community. By September 1987, Mnet decoders could be found inside 50,000 households, and by March 1988, this number had increased to 100,000 households, and Mnet was officially a success. Under Becker, the mobile operation MTN, formerly known by the name of its parent company, Mcell, was founded in concert with other partners. Today, MTN is Africa's largest mobile phone operator by a wide margin. Becker became the CEO of Naspers in 1997, which was first a South African newspaper and magazine publishing company, before pivoting to technology investing. By that time, Becker had stepped down from his role at MTN to focus on his new position as CEO of Naspers. The MTN brand offers its services and products in many countries outside of Africa as well. Investment in Tencent In 2001, Naspers invested $32 million in Chinese startup Tencent for a 46.5% stake in the company. In hindsight, Coos believed the Tencent investment was just a lucky opportunity, but Naspers hit the jackpot. Crossing over from television to the internet, wasn't considered a natural progression by many. However, he realized how large and impactful instant messaging had become in the 1990s because of his time at MTN and the rapid increase in mobile device usage in China. They believed that Tencent, a small startup at the time, was prepared to explode after it hit the instant messaging service called QQ. In 2004, Tencent listed on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange, but it would take an additional 10 years for the company to become what it is today. Naspers has since spun out its investment in Tencent into Process, another listed entity, yet they still hold a 30% stake of Tencent, which is valued at over $160 billion. 
It's now been over 20 years since Kuz Becker spent $36 million purchasing one-third of the Chinese tech startup. It's considered one of the most profitable investments in history. Since its purchase of the stake, Naspers has delivered a total return to shareholders, including dividends, of nearly 12,000%. That windfall of success has allowed the South African billionaire to continue his tech investments in developing markets, winning with investments like Russian internet giant Mail.ru and India's largest e-retailer Flipkart. He also oversees Africa's largest pay TV platform, DSTV, and the growing video-on-demand service, Showmax. Coos created a pay TV empire built a telecommunications company, and transformed it into one of the biggest investment companies in the planet. But today, in fact, Naspers is still publishing papers, and although the editorial line has changed, Becker now serves as chairman and has given the CEO job to former eBay executive Bob Van Dijk back in 2014. Kuz Becker's investment strategy. According to Kuz, the future is very hard to predict. As such... He has moved away from trying to predict the future, to taking action instead. What separates Kuz Becker's investment strategy is that Naspers invests in companies outside of the United States, since he sees more potential for growth in those countries compared to the oversaturated market in America. This is a similar strategy to what Manish Pabrai and Li Lu are doing. In fact, Becker is known to take a year-long sabbatical where he goes to Shanghai, Seoul, San Francisco, and other places besides the United States in search of new ideas. Even though there's a lot more money chasing emerging markets, internet deals today and fierce competition from both locals and U.S. giants like Amazon.com, he says the time away convinced him that the company needs to double down on e-commerce in developing countries. Future of Naspers without Kuz Becker. Tencent's success stemmed from its ability to respond to the sweeping and fundamental changes that occurred in the personal computing and internet markets and was aided by its early bets. The shift to mobile and smartphones, e-commerce, subscriptions, games, and gamification, virtual goods, social networking, and investments in growing markets. So, naturally... There's enormous unspoken pressure for Naspers to find the next Tencent. In 2014, Becker, acutely aware of his limitations, decided to step down, saying, We screwed up frequently, but we had a great deal of fun, and I couldn't imagine another job that would have fitted my limited talents better and would have given me more pleasure. It wasn't the smoothest of handovers. Anthony Rowe, who was the head of the internet business, was the heir to the Naspers throne. Rose's unexpected death upended the original well-thought-out and considered succession plan. So now, Becker passed down the reins to Bob Van Dijk, the current CEO of Naspers and Prosus, who Becker describes as the best e-commerce man in the world. Although I'd love to do a deep dive on Bob Van Dijk, since he's a very fascinating study as well, I'll leave this long video with where Naspers focuses its area of investing under his management. They have investments in classifieds, food delivery, payments, and fintech, education, health, and retail, as well as ventures and social and internet platforms. Gigi's strategy for Tencent is threefold. Number one, they partner with local tech entrepreneurs. Number two, they focus their investments at the intersection of high growth in markets and technology to address big societal needs at scale. Number three, they want to invest in sustainable leadership to reach scale and profitability. Although the strategy might have changed a bit, especially with his focus on food delivery and e-commerce, he is still committed to Tencent and it doesn't seem like they're willing to part with any of their shares just yet. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of Kuz Becker and what do you think of his investment strategy. Thank you so much for watching, and if you like this video, please share it with your friends and family. It helps the channel a great deal. Leave in the comments section your thoughts about the video and who I should cover next.
With that said, thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.